Okay, look, I'm in Schoology. It doesn't really matter what, what period it is. Down here at the bottom, you can see that uh, there's a sports and school text one video guide. And it's, you know, it's for everybody. Um, but it definitely is good for remote students as well who are using Cami. Speaking of Cami, in this text one through five sports and school argument, you can see that um, this PDF comes along with a button that says open assignment with Cami. And if, if you don't, you don't see that you're fully remote and you don't see that. Uh, if you're using Chrome, all you have to do is type in Cami Chrome extension. Or if you're using Microsoft Edge, for instance, you just type in Microsoft Edge Cami and you can download the extension. All it does is it, I don't see it up here, but um, it'll create this little extension for you so that you can open and you go click, clickety click right here. It'll open in something that looks like this. It's a PDF, but it allows you to do what I think are like the two most important things are the markup, which means you can highlight and you can see some yellow highlighter over here. And you can also make text boxes. So for instance, if you wanted to write something in the margin, or if you got to the brainstorming part of text one, you can simply just, you know, type your answer, which I think is way easier than uh, on paper. So it has some advantages, it has some disadvantages, and at some point um, I will be able to, to, see, to see your work so that I can help you keep moving forward. Um, as we move forward together as a class, you know, this whole thing is going to be a, a process and so far that process has involved understanding that we are reading five texts in order to make an argument that stems from one simple single question and that's whether or not extracurricular sports should be part of the American school experience. That's a very unique thing in the United States that uh, people play sports for their high school and the rest of the world just simply doesn't do that. And in this first text you can see that this woman Amanda Ripley who wrote this, she's a Time Magazine writer. She also wrote for the Atlantic and uh, Text one is, is hers and she says that this is the case against high school sports. She offers lots of things and you can see just from my active reading, uh, just a couple things that, you know, there's this international test and in South Korea, you know, South Korea is fifth in math, they don't have sports. And then she points out that the United States is 36 on that same exact test from 2012. Uh, this nine out of 10 suggests foreign students think that Americans, uh, nine out of 10 foreign students think Americans, you know, are way too concerned about sports. Uh, Americans typically spend more than twice the time Korean kids play sports. Uh, this is a little note about club sports. And this is going to be important. All these, all these active reading marks are going to help you down the road because we get to text four or text five and we're like, okay, we're getting to this point where we're going to make an argument in writing. Text one is going to be so far in the past, but if you can find the things that you're looking for, like these are the numbers about the cheerleader versus the math student. This is how many kids at, what is it, Shawnee? Yeah, how many kids at Shawnee High in Jersey uh, took an AP test versus how many were playing sports? I mean, she even points out the benefits of, uh, of, of playing sports. I mean, she's not totally biased. And then as I flip it, I can see that's a football. I drew a football. It's not great, but kind of has a baseball shape with pointy edges. That's a football. This is all about football and the money that's spent on football. Some of these marks aren't mine. Some of these are some other students. But between here and here, I like this. This person was like, this is about like making cuts. I see cut basic academic costs. So I just write, wrote the word cuts right here. Uh, over here, this is a great quote about math versus sports. And then I got the graduation rate, South Korea versus the US, 93% of South Korean students graduate versus 77% here in the United States. And then at the end, she writes about uh, charter schools. And that takes me over here. And I love this piece where at the basis charter school on AP test day, kids go into their exams to eye of the tiger. So, you know, they, they really, pump up the idea of kids, you know, working hard at school. The only thing I was going to add right here is at the end, I thought this was a great quote. It really kind of wraps up 
exactly just about everything that Amanda Ripley is going for. And it's from the woman from Ogle Block, who's the basis co-founder. And she says, I actually believe that sports are extremely important. I mean, I think a lot of us realize that there's a lot of benefits to sports. It does a lot for us in our lives. Almost too many to list. But, and there's always a but that comes along with it. She says, the problem is that once sports become important to the school, they start colliding with academics. And and I think that's the whole point. You know, we're 36th in math in the world and 28th in science and 24th in reading. It just feels like the nation that created the vaccine that's going to be distributed all over the world, you would think that future, the future needs to be brighter than, than what it currently is. So. Well, it, you can't always go by test scores in school because Elon Musk said that he never got the best grades in school either. Not ever. I mean, not everyone can get the best grades in school, but they are smarter in other aspects of life. I totally agree. And of course, we're talking about one person, but I'm thinking like just as a whole, as a whole society, I think that's, that's the point that Amanda Ripley, I think, is trying to say, like, as a whole, you know, America needs to be better. Can you get on board with that? I mean, it's not my argument. This is her argument. Well, it, the nice thing is that if, uh, if you read text one and it kind of made you a little angry, uh, text two starts taking a turn and you can see that in text two, this guy Kai Sato, uh, he, it's entitled The Case for High School Sports. And I'm, I'm not gonna do a lot of this reading for you, but I just want you to understand that when Amanda Ripley wrote that, um, some people got fired up. And in fact, this article, the following article was posted on the Huffington Post in, res in response to, I like this, like, Amanda Ripley, that was published in the Atlantic Magazine, and this guy Kai Sato uh, wrote something that got posted on the HuffingtonPost.com in response to Amanda's, Rip, Amanda Ripley's essay. Uh, Kai Sato is the co-founder and chief operating officer of Field Level Incorporated, a social network that, according to its website, makes it easy for recruiting coaches and pro scouts to find players who fit their needs. And he enters the conversation with Ripley by drawing on his personal experience and disagreeing with some of her assumptions. So, you know, what, uh, what Gage just said actually kind of comes into play here. So this might be an article that, that suits him and others for an argument that, that you might make down the road once the writing occurs. I'll just start um, just the first two paragraphs and then here's what's gonna happen. Um, Text two is all yours today. And that includes the brainstorming that goes along with it. You know, what's his, what's Kai Sato's primary claim? What are his best pieces of evidence? And in fact, uh, I'm okay with eliminating as many as two of these boxes, but I will definitely eliminate one of these. But you need, looks like this is the, what's gonna end up being the number one piece of evidence as far as you're concerned. And then, you know, what are other three, three maybe three other pieces of evidence that he presents that you think is compelling, interesting, important, and might even be useful down the road. So, and then if you still have not yet finished your thinking about uh, the brainstorming on text one, same thing, what's Amanda Ripley's primary claim? Even if you don't agree with it, what's her primary claim? And you know, what are some pieces of evidence you just simply can't ignore? Maybe some of the data, some of the stats. So anyway, just to get us started and then I'll turn it over to you. This is Kai Sato responding to Ripley's essay. And he writes, last week, a provocative article appeared in the Atlantic titled The Case Against High School Sports. In a publication known for great journalism, the piece has received thousands of likes on Facebook and evoked hundreds of comments as it argues that high school sports hinder America's academic performance compared with other nations. While it's imperative that we constantly strive to improve the educational experience for America's youth, the article's representation of high school sports in our country is short-sighted. 
it suggests that high schools should not subsidize sports teams, stating, quote, and this is where he quotes something from the article we just read, in other countries, most schools do not staff, manage, transport, insure, or glorify sports teams because, well, why would they? And you can see from his next sentence, he's about to offer a number of reasons why, why they should, why sports should be a part of school. So um, same idea, the active reading part of it, um, what, what's compelling, what's interesting, what could be important, what could be useful, what statistics or even quotations do you think are uh, vivid enough or eye-catching enough that you're like, I need to mark this. And my suggestion to you is the same idea, you know, make some marks in the text that eventually have some sort of corresponding mark in the margin so that when it comes time, you can quickly find what you're looking for. Where are those graduation rates? Oh, here they are. I wrote it down in the margin. It's easy to find down the road. So text two, including the brainstorming. By the end of the period. And then uh, if you haven't yet finished text one, tackle that. <laughs>